back to Pure Evil MMA. You are tuning in for the CES 50 Recap Show, which went down last night. We have an entire show stacked of fighters who fought last night and were actually at the fight last night. So a quick preview before any of the fighters call in. Each fighter are going to be calling in for about five minutes to talk about some of their fights. We got Jose Lugo that's going to be calling in, who won his fight in the second round at 1 minute and 21 seconds. Going up against Michael Taylor now. Jose Lugo, he's moving up to 2-0. He has one a, a very sad story about his daughter uh, that he's going to be sharing with us in just a second here. Also on today's show, uh, show we have Fabio Charan, who if you guys have been following Pure Evil MMA, you know that he was just on the show not too long ago. We got our first guest calling in right now, who's uh, Jose Lugo calling in. How you doing, Jose? You're on uh, Pure Evil MMA. I'm doing great. How are you? Thank you for having me. Man, uh, last night, man, I... First off, let me say this. Congratulations on your win. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, so for everybody out there that, that isn't familiar, that wasn't at the show last night or wasn't able to catch the fight, man, uh, you were going in there up against Michael Taylor. It was not the co-main event, but the fight right before there. Uh, you're moving now to 3-0. You won the fight by a rear naked choke in the second round at a minute and 21 seconds. But before we talk about any of that, one thing that really stood out about you and your story is your little girl, man, uh, you know, fighting for your little girl. What's going on with her for, for people out there that aren't familiar with the disease and, and what's going on currently right now with, uh, with your family? Well, my daughter was born with a birth defect birth defect called um, tracheomalacia. It's basically when your airways is underdeveloped. So um, she has rigids and it's soft. Her windpipe is soft. So at any time it can collapse or um, when she eats stuff, it's easy for her to choke. So yeah, her oxygen levels will drop at night. And yeah, I mean, she would turn purple on us. We would have to give her CPR. You were saying... I also... You... I also had it myself. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I was more on the lucky side of it, and I grew out of it within a month. So, yeah, she's not so lucky, and uh, she'll be going to surgery July 27th, and uh, hopefully everything goes good. So when you're going in there and you're getting ready for these fights, is it very emotional for you knowing that you, know, you need to go in there, you need to get a win for your daughter to continue this lifestyle that you're living? I mean, the fighter's lifestyle is not one of the easiest lifestyles. It's actually a very selfish sport. So does it make you kind of you know, more emotional or at least more ambitious, I guess? Yeah, it definitely makes me both more emotional and more ambitious because, I, I mean, I... I'm, I'm having a race against time, you know, because I have to balance work, my family, and fighting in one. is re it's really, really hard, you know. If, and where I'm at at the, at the sport, it's not like I can do fighting full time because it doesn't pay my bills. So, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's definitely really hard, and it was definitely a really emotional fight, especially seeing the video right before you walk out, you know. I was trying to keep myself composed and not show my teary eyes and stuff. You know, you got to flip the switch once you get in there. You know, a big thing that your opponent was saying, and, and, you know, he did take this fight on short notice, but he was saying in some of the interviews before the fight that he was going to try to keep it on the feet. Like I said, he kept it on short, no he took the fight on short notice. Was it a surprise to you that, uh, you know, it was mostly grappling at the beginning, despite what he was saying? Uh, I knew he was going to try to keep it on the feet. Uh, but I don't know what happened with his game plan. He ended up switching it halfway through. But he caught me. He caught me early in the back of the year, and uh, that I lost my equilibrium. Like uh, I lost my balance. I almost landed on my face. So I knew I had to shorten the distance up and get right on him, just to grind him out and wear him out. Cause I knew he wasn't gonna be able to keep up with my cardio, and that that's what dictated the fight. He was really tired, so I could have done whatever I wanted with him after the second round. Yeah, a big part of this fight, you guys were doing a lot of scrambles, man. I mean, it looked like you were going for submission, and then there would be a, a scramble, and then you would get on top and start hammering away like that. How, when when all that was going on, were you just kind of like, oh, man, like, I need this. Like, what was going through your head through all that? Oh, man, I was just, I was just, I was just, 
man, yeah, definitely, yeah. We, we kept a high pace and he kept moving. So every time he would give me the opportunity to drop elbows and hurt him, I, I would take it. Every time he would expose his neck or any body part, I would grab it. So I, I was just trying to be smart and efficient with my energy, you know. When when there was nothing to, to submit him with, I would just beat the pulp out of him. When he would expose his neck just right for me, I would grab it, you know. So uh, I, I was just trying to be efficient with my energy and try to get that win as soon as possible. So now you're moving on. You got one KO. You got two submissions. Uh, what, what's next for you? I know, I know you want to kind of enjoy your time right now, but, you know, and, and at this level, you guys usually fight three times a year, two, three, maybe four times a year. Well, what's the rest of this year yeah, look I, like for you? I I already fought three times in seven months. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to maybe fight one or two more times before the year ends. Um, what events does CES have coming up uh, within the They next... have one in August, but I'm taking that one off. So probably the one after that one, which I don't know if it's either September or October. So Dave Madden, uh, he, he sent out a tweet during the fight. He was like, he said that your opponent threw his mouthpiece out right before the, he, the end of that choke. Did you notice that? Uh, no, no, I didn't notice because I was trying to square for dear life. But uh, I saw the video and, yeah, <laughs> I kind of squeezed it out of his mouth and it, he had to get it out so he can breathe a little better. But how much does that really help, though? I don't know. I don't think it helps at all. <laughs> it, was, it was kind of just a last-minute thing. Were you able to catch up with Mike Taylor after the fight? Uh, no, but I, I guess he went up to my girl and said hi, you know, um, to my kids. He, he's a great guy, really nice guy, a family man just like me. But I, I didn't get to catch him after the fight, no. So when the fight was going on, before we let you go, I did notice one hand gesture that you did make. I saw you kind of do like the strap signal. Is that something that you're aiming for in the next couple of fights? Hopefully by 2019? Oh, no, 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 no. I was just, just the name, you know, the name on my pants or so oh, okay, you know. Okay, okay, okay. So, so people right... can remember the name, but yeah, I mean, this, the strap will come when it comes. Uh, that's up to the, the promoters and stuff. It, when they feel like I'm deserving, then, you know, that's when I go for it. Other than that, you know, I'm just patient and I'll take one fight at a time. So at the end of the first round, man, I personally scored the 10-8. I was keeping up with the media team. But there was a moment right at the end of that round where it looked like you were about to literally snap it. Like, it almost looked like a twister. Like, some, what was that at the end of the first round? Oh, um, like I said, uh, every time somebody exposes their neck or any body part, I'm going to try to hurt it. So he turned, like, he was looking backwards trying to look at me for some reason while I'm on his back. So I made him pay for that, you know, defend the choke. So I grabbed his neck and I just started cranking on it. I just wanted to hurt him pretty much. I, I, when I'm in there, I'm just, my, man, my mindset's no mercy. So he gave me his neck and I was just trying to crank it. You know, I, I didn't think nothing of it, but yeah, I could have fucking killed him with that. Sorry, part my language. <laughs> Last but not <laughs> least, what was your thoughts on the main event? Unfortunately, Sweetbread was unable to get the win. It was very sad, very emotional to watch the reaction of the crowd. But we have a new champion, Andre Uhl. What is your uh, a take on that fight, that bantamweight world championship? I mean, it's, it's definitely a shame, you know, for Sweetbread to lose. But you know, he's a He's a people's champ, you know, people love him. I, I was rooting for him, but, you know, the other guy took the belt, and the other guy, you know, he was a beast too, so he, they're both deserving. The other guy just was the better man that night, and he got the, the belt, you know. Hats off to him. Hats off to Andre Uhl. Jose Lugo, thank you so much for joining me today on Pure Evil and May checking out on the CES 50 recap show, guys. We have so many more fighters coming on, but before we get to that, make sure you are following Jose Lugo on social media. You can follow him on Twitter at E-L-S-A-L-V-A-J-E-L-U-G-O. Is that the same on Instagram, Jose? Uh, no. Instagram is uh, Jose El Salvaje. Lugo 08. There you go, guys. Thank you so much, and we're looking forward to what the future has in store for you, Jose. Thank you, brother. Thank you for having me. God bless. God bless.
God bless you too. All right, guys, so next we have Chris O'Brien, who if you're not familiar with, he is the Cage Titans champion. He's going to be calling in right now. He was actually cage side last night uh, at the fights, and it's pretty cool because he's been on the show before. I've interviewed him before. Uh, he's really close friends and trains out of the same gym as Joe Giannetti, who's on this season of Ultimate Fighter, season 27, undefeated. So uh, he's going to be calling in right now. Here he is, the champ. Chris O'Brien. Here we go. So Chris O'Brien on the phone, the bearded dragon. Thanks for tuning in and calling in to Pure Evil MMA. What's going on, champ? Nothing much, man. It's good to uh, good to talk to you. It was so, good to see you last night for the first time, too. Yeah, I was just telling everybody, man, that uh, you, you came out. It's huge that you did that, man, because you're the Cage Titan champion right now, the the... the uh, amateur champ, and it's good that you go out and you make an appearance. There was all the media team there last night, uh, big uh, local guys. We even had Matt Bassett, Nick Newell there. Uh, what, what was your take on, on the event last night, Chris? Oh, it was an awesome time. I, I think I was talking to the uh, your buddy that you introduced me to. From the, the MMA, MMA holes. holes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome guys. Um, had a lot of fun talking to them. Uh, but yeah, I was telling them too. It's like you know, it doesn't matter like which show it is. It's always it kind of feels like almost like a family event. Like you know, you, maybe some guys you haven't seen since like you know the last time you fought, or you know maybe last year you haven't crossed paths in a while. So you see all these guys that you haven't seen and, and uh, women that you haven't seen from the scene in a while. Um, you know, so it's kind of, it's almost like a family gathering. So it's like that in itself is pretty cool. But the, uh, the show was awesome, man. I think only, only two fights went to decision if I'm, if I'm correct. Yeah. Um, yeah. So a lot of finishes last night. Everybody looked great. I had a lot of friends on the card. So it was a great night. So as you were just saying, I think that's the, uh, the biggest point on why I had you on the show, because uh, unlike the other people who are going to be calling in, you were one of the fighters that actually got to sit and enjoy and kind of see what was going on in the scene at the time uh, around us. And like I said, there was people like Matt Bassett, Nick Newell. You were walking around. The media table was there. And if there's something that I want to bring to the table in 2018 as a media partner is to kind of connect that gap that has been missing for so many years amongst uh, you know the media and the fighters. I think the reason was... Uh, a lot of the old school generation media did a lot of bashing on the fighters. And that's not why I'm here. I don't think that's why Nolan's here. I don't think that's why the MMA holes are here. We're all here to really, we realize that we need to grow each other's brand. It takes two to tango. Exactly. You know, we're, we should be here for, for one reason, and it should be for the love of the sport. You know what I mean? Um, and, you know, if anything good comes out of our love for the sport, you know, new friendships, you know, um, opportunities and stuff, then that's awesome. And, you know, we, uh, our success in our fields, but it should be for the love of the sport. And, you know, I kind of agree with you to a certain extent for, for people around here, like, you know, kind of just wanting to bash people more than build them up. You know what I mean? And it's just like, it, it sucks to see, especially now on the other side, you know, I was just a fan before, but like being in the cage, it, it's so tough, man. Like, I, and I feel like some guys that like maybe haven't stepped in there and they, they voice their opinions and want to bash people. It's like, come on, dude, you haven't stepped in there. Like, you don't know that feeling. You don't know, like being in your underwear in front of like, you know, a hundred of your closest friends and family, like you're about to get your head kicked in. Like, you know what I mean? So it's, it's awesome to see guys like you um, and guys like me, like wanting to reach out to each other and, and build each other up then like tear each other down. And, and you make a huge point there with talking about the, the, uh, you know, the people that are ringside and all the nerves. First off, these poor guys who are cutting all this weight, you know, at the Twin River Casino, when you walk in, you smell KFC and Taco Bell. That, yeah. That's got to turn your stomach if you're cutting weight and, and you're all anxious before your fight. You're, you have all the nerves. You have your family there. And another thing, man, like where I was sitting, so where I was sitting on press row, the families for each fight, they'd, they'd like circle in and out. Like they'd rotate like – Whoever's family, whoever was fighting, their family would come up right next to me. And it was so hard to watch, you know, the reactions to the fight. And it, it, it changes things. It changes your, it makes it more emotional when you're at a live event. And you see oh, that. definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And I, I, I kind of feel that too. Like, you know, even just like fighting at uh, Memorial Hall and stuff and, and Cage Titans. Like, I, I kind of feel bad almost when I sell my friends and family tickets. Like, hey, like, yeah, come see me compete. But then, it, like, it kind of, like, gets more real getting towards the fight. It's like, man, they paid to, like, it's see me stressful. get punched in the face. Like, <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I'm just, I'm just inviting them to be stressed out and worried. <laughs> it's like, but it's all good. 
that's literally that's literally what happens like hey do you want to feel real stressed out for a night and <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah you want to possibly ruin your evening yeah come on out <laughs> but, but that's like one of the reasons why this sport is so good like for the fans out there once you get an attachment towards a fighter you know you feel some towards attachment they retweet your tweet or or whatever it is something that you know you like about them it, 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 there's nothing like this sport man there's baseball basketball uh soccer i have never been on the edge of my seat the way i am right off the bat it could be the first fight of the night i'm not uh, like freaking out at the first pitch or the first kick of a, a soccer game the yeah. fighting brings a whole different element so the next thing i want to talk to you about man is you know matt Bassett was there you had Nick Newell there. All these guys are getting their big opportunities. What what kind of vibe did you pick up, uh, you know, being around some of these, you know, other fighters around there, you know, being at the event? You said it was kind of like a family vibe, but at the same time, you guys are all after the same thing. Um, but at the same time, we're all East Coast family, so it was kind of the vibe. How was your night? Uh, no, it was awesome as always. I've, I've been to a few CESs now. I think uh, my, my first one was last year. Um, I forget which one it was, but um, so I've been to a couple. So I, I just, you know, I feel more comfortable in the setting and stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I kind of look at things. I almost look at pro and amateur like two different sports. You know what I mean? Like so, so much changes. Like your level of dedication has to go up when you go from amateur to pro. Um, you know what I mean? Like obviously the rounds change, the the rule set changes. So I, I almost like I, I look at them as like completely separate. So like when I see pros, I don't really look like oh we're going for the same thing because we're we're not technically because we're not we're not in the same category. But yeah, like but when I see other amateurs like in my weight class, I'm always you know real cordial and stuff. And you know if we have a cross pass, then that's awesome. Uh, you know we'll see who comes out on top. But it's like I said, you, even if even if there's a possibility of me fighting someone I see there, it's like hey man, what's up? <laughs> Want to grab a beer? <laughs> well, I just mean it in the sense of pretty much like all these guys have what they've been through. Me and you have been watching them fight for for years now, and finally, like right when they literally thought they're ready to like hang it up. It, they were never going to get the call. Lo and behold, they get the call. That, that That's the point I'm trying to make here is that, like, we've got to watch a lot of guys blossom here on the yeah. East Coast as of late. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, like you said, Matt Bissett, uh, Nick Newell, obviously uh, Lally and and, uh, and Curtis just oh, got a yeah. shot in the Contender Series. That's a whole other issue right there. Uh, but, you know, even my teammates, you know, Manny Bermuda is finally getting the call up. You know, Joe being on the Ultimate Fighter. Um, I'm sure there's a bunch of other names I'm, I'm not even thinking about right now. You know, the other guys like Font and Qatar, um, you know, yeah, we got we got a lot of names, and I'm sure there's a lot more laying in wait uh, that are that are ready for it when they get called too. So yeah, it's amazing to see like so many so many homegrown guys like getting their opportunities. So Chris, before we let you go, one last thing: what did you rate last night's card? And starting with that main event, man, I mean, what a heartbreaker! That was for Sweet Bread, Denise Piva, uh, going up against Andre Uhl. And unfortunately, you know, those first two rounds, what were you feeling in those first two rounds? Because the crowd was going crazy. This was a back and forth fight. Uh, Sweet Bread got his eye busted up in the second, but I gave him the first and the second rounds. How were you scoring the first and second up until that point? And how were you feeling? Hi. I, I scored it the same way. So I actually met Dennis, um, the last CES card. Um, we have some mutual friends. So uh, we started talking and stuff, we kind of became friends. So I was definitely pulling for him, man. Uh, he's a great dude. Um, you know, bust his app. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I had it uh, 2 nothing, uh five uh, going into the third. And, and uh, I understand that, like, you know, he was having maybe some more success on the ground. That guy had some really good movement, really fast hands. Um, but I still think Dennis was winning pretty much everything. Um, you know, going going into that third round, and he just got caught. You know, he did everything right to try to get out of it, just couldn't spin out of it, um, and had to tap. You know, like you like you said, it's heartbreaking, but you know that's the sport, man. Um, you win some, you lose some, and but you know he always shows up, always in great shape, always a smile on his face from what I've seen. So you know, nothing but respect to both of them. I mean, right after the fight, after the fight let out, I saw him, and well, before I even say that, right after the fight let out. Uh, when they were still inside the cage, you could just feel the energy of the room get sucked out. Everyone was just like, like it, it was just a broken, a broken scene at that point. The family, all the fans. I mean, I kind of felt bad 
for the family next to me, but at the same time in this sport, this shit happens all the time. You got to keep moving. You got to keep pumping forward. But one thing I liked that Sweet Bread did, even though he was really upset, he didn't want to hear his opponent get booed. He, yep. he he got on I got on his feet and he was like, you know what? Don't boo this man. Cheer. And he started waving his hands. And yeah. uh, I thought that was very respectful on his on his behalf. Yeah, like you said, that shows you the kind of person, that, you know, the kind of guy he is and the kind of competitor he is. I think he literally stood up on the stool and literally got up and was just like, no, 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 like, you got to give it up to this dude. Like, he put it all on the line. I didn't do, you know, and, and that's, I kind of feel the same way. Like, I, I don't, like, I always applaud my opponent, like, when we're getting, like, you know, you know, called into the cage and stuff. Like, you know, this guy took a fight, you know, took time out of his, out of his, you know, busy schedule and stuff and, and, and put forth his best effort to come here and compete against me. Like, you got to give it up for him. Don't boom. You know what I mean? Like, we're, we're two dudes doing, you know, what we love to do. And, and I'm glad that he took that, that aspect. Like I said, he's just a, a great dude all around from what I've, I've seen. What do you think happens next with Sweet Brad? Last question. I think he gets right back on the horse and, and, uh, takes whatever, uh, CES gives him. Last but not least, you're over at Cage Titans. We were talking last night. Um, what what were you telling me? You're thinking about August, maybe your next fight? Yes, yeah, sir. So, um, yeah, we're, we're I'm not I'm not we can't really discuss it yet, but we're, we're working on a little something for August. Um, we're basically just working out some scheduling issues with somebody, um, and then hopefully we can make this matchup uh, a reality. Uh, but it should be a really big matchup for local MMA in New England if we can get it done. So I'll, I'll, I'll be excited to announce it if we if we get it done. That's them South Shore boys, guys. Make sure you guys go follow Chris O'Brien on Twitter at, what is it, Chris O-B-08? No, it's uh, Chris O-B-531, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, um, and then the Beat of Dragon MMA on Facebook. There you go, guys. Thank you so much, Chris. Enjoy the rest of your day, and thank you for stopping by for the CES 50 recap show. Have a great day. Thanks, brother. I'll talk to you. All right, guys, so next we got on Mallory Martin, who unfortunately wasn't able to fight this week. Let me give her a text message really quick. This was unfortunate. Right before the fight was going to be uh, going down, Mallory found news that her opponent was overweight. Not just a little, by a lot. 17 pounds overweight. Unfortunately, she was reluctant. Still want to take the fight, which is very risky. I mean, that's another thing. Like when when you're in the situation that Mallory was in, where you know you're you're not from 20 minutes away, you drove pretty far to get here, or flew pretty far. It's really disrespectful when when a fighter does something like that. So I got to get her take on how she feels. She didn't even stay for the fight. It must have been completely upsetting. Let me get her on the line right now. We're gonna be calling her. Boom, 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 boom. Guys, before we call her, make sure you subscribe down below here on iTunes. You can get all the latest MMA news at MyMMANews.com, where you can find all the Pure Evil MMA content. Last but not least, some new content, uh, some new merchandise is going to be dropping today as well at Teespring.com if you want to support Pure Evil MMA. And by the way, got that evil tattoo healing up for my birthday this week. And I want to thank all of you guys for the birthday wishes. Let's get Mallory Martin on the line right now. you called has a hey let's try to give it a call again Greeley Colorado it says hopefully I'm calling the right number you never know Hey, what's going on, Mallory? Thank you for coming on Pure Evil MMA. We are live right now. I was just telling the audience and everybody that's tuning in what your situation was for this fight. It was very heartbreaking. Your opponent coming in overweight, not by a little bit, by a lot. 17 pounds overweight. Before we get into that, you know, how did this fight come into play? Because they, they had to reach out for you. They were really catering to your opponent for this fight, it seemed. Um, how did I find out about the fight? How did, how did this fight come into play? Was it, you know, did Pat Sullivan call you and say, hey, I go, got this fight for you at, uh, 
at CES oh, no. 50. That was, it, my manager found it for me. I think they contacted my manager and uh, he set it up. Because after my... Uh, Right after the win with LFA, when uh, I got done and came out of the locker room, whatever, my manager was like, oh, we already got, like, the next fight. Uh, you want it? Like, it's yours. I can book it next week, blah, blah, blah. And so I was like, yeah, of course, you know, coming off a win. I obviously wanted to get right back into it, so. Yeah, but, and then, I don't know, do you think, well, what I mean I by that is when she came in overweight, they were really trying to push the fight. You were too. You were like, I came all this way. I don't want to not have a fight. That, Like I'm trying to say, they were trying to get the fight to go through. But, you know, 17 pounds overweight. How did oh, you feel no, about absolutely that? absolutely not. No. We knew that she, so I had already made weight at like 1130. And, like, the promoter or whatever, he was, like, texting me, like, oh, you know, like, the they'll be there to pick you up at 3 o'clock. Uh, and then he's, like, how's your weight? And I'm, like, bro, I'm already on weight, you know? Like, and so then that's when I was kind of, like, something's up, you know? Like, mentally I was, like, something's up. And so I, like, start getting ready, and uh, it's around, like, one thirty or whatever. And my coach comes in. He's, like, hey, will you come uh, out? We need to talk to you. And so I was, like, all right. Something's really up. And so I'm like, what's going on? He's like, uh, so apparently she was 125 at 9 a.m. And I was like, so what's the deal? Like, you know, like, she can make it. You know, I've cut that much weight to get to it, like, the day of, you know? So it's like, what's the deal? Like, what do you mean, 9 a.m.? She has plenty of time to cut, you know? So I knew going to weigh-ins that she uh, was going to miss weight. But we are hoping that she would make at least 120. And then uh, on the way to Wins, we got the call from our manager, and he was saying, like, oh, I haven't heard anything, but we're hoping that she, like, cut to 120 at least, you know, so that fight's still on or whatever. And so I get there, and she, like, shows up late, and I'm, like, and the doctor is getting cleared by the doctor or whatever, and uh, she gets on the scale, gets off the scale, gets on the scale, gets off the scale three different times. Like, thinking that the number on the scale is going to change, and you know? And she's like, oh, well, my scale at home said I was 127. And the promoter's like, well, this scale is right, and it says 133. And my coach is like, your scale at home is wrong. And then he came over and told me, and I was like, you have got to be kidding me. Like, that's not even a, like, a, oops, I'm so sorry. Like, I had a period or, you know, like, sure, there, there wasn't enough time left or something like that, you know, that is understandable, but, like, that's 18 pounds. Like, you didn't, you know, you knew, like, two weeks ago that you weren't going to make weight, you know? So it's like, why even show up? Like, why embarrass yourself, you know? Like, I just don't understand. I just don't get it. How did you feel, like, in that moment that you're sharing right now, just at the weigh-ins, watching her step on and off the scale, what was going through your head? Oh, I, I was just upset. Like, it was a joke. Like, she played me you know kind of like I don't know I think like my coaches were even saying like maybe she like obviously she didn't want to fight me because she would have you know like she there's no reason to show up you know like that overweight <laughs> I and, even saw people <laughs> tweeting that they're like hey, man I wouldn't make weight either if I had to fight Mallory <laughs> yeah you know so it's like I don't even know like maybe she thought because my last not my last opponent, but my last two opponents have missed weight, and I still accepted the fight. So maybe she thought, like, oh, she's still going to accept it either way kind of thing. But, like, being overweight by 18 pounds, that's, like, she didn't even give me a chance to accept it or decline it. Like, there's no way the fight would ever happen at, over that much weight. So this kind of reminds me of Mayhem Miller. When Mayhem Miller missed weight by 25 pounds, he takes his shorts off and gets back on the scale as if 25 pounds were going to be taken away within that exactly, brief second. Exactly. So th this yeah, is... Yeah, and when I was there, like, she didn't say a word to me. She wouldn't look me in the eyes. Like, oh. she didn't come up to my coaches. She didn't say nothing. She turned in her ticket money and left. You know, this is going on a lot, Mallory. This is no, this is no surprise to anybody. This is going on uh, even in the highest 
elite levels of the sport with the UFC. How do you fix this problem? How do you prevent this from happening again? Honestly, like, I feel like that's just people being unprofessional. Like, I don't know. You can't really, you don't, you can't control people. You know, you can't control how their work, work ethic. You can't control their diet. You know, it's up to them if they want to work for it. If they want to diet, if they want to do it, it's, then they do it, you know? If you're a professional, you do it. That's your job, you know? So obviously, like, she's not a professional, and there's a lot of people who don't take this seriously, you know, and do miss weight by tons of tons of pounds or whatever, but I feel like you can't really control people and say, like, or I can't really give you an answer on, like, what to do to prevent this because it's up to the person, like... I know I will always make weight, and I know I always stick to my diet, and I always train hard, so it's like there's no reason for me not to make weight, you know? What do you think? There should be a a more severe punishment? I was looking at what people are saying on Twitter. Yeah, definitely. I feel like she should get a suspension, you know? Like, you costed the promotion money. They flew me out here, paid for my hotel room. You costed me money. Like, my manager money. I didn't get paid, you know, like, you costed my coaches their, uh, like, time away from their businesses to make money, you know? Like, if you look at it, like, she totally just, like, played us all, you know? It's it's just, like, you could have just simply called or didn't sign the contract to fight me. Like, I just don't understand why you you waited, you knowing, like, you're not going to make weight by not even a close amount, like, and then to show up and be like, oh, my scale at home says 127. Yeah, listen, like, give the opportunity to somebody else at least that can yeah, show up. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, they could have easily found me another opponent. Well, I don't get what the point was for her to, to stick that out. And, guys, we're talking about Maria Rivera uh, here. And, this, like I said, this has been going on a lot. I saw a really good uh, a tweet saying that this probably should have been counted as a loss due to it being – almost 20 pounds overweight yeah yeah you know so what what do you do now because like you said you you don't get you don't get your uh your pay you got to go back to the gym you have to motivate yourself again what did you guys discuss as a team uh, as you were leaving there because you didn't even stay for the fights i even tweeted you i was like you know if you're still there tomorrow let's catch up let's talk and it it just seemed like you just wanted to get out of there yeah i was left the day after like early in the morning there's just no reason to stay out there, you know, and I was pretty upset, and I'm still, like, pretty much upset and just in disbelief, kind of, like, I just don't understand, you know, and, uh... You haven't but, contacted her at all, Maria? No, or no. Said, said anything to her, or is there anything you would like her to know? How you feel? Yeah, like, if you don't want to be a professional, then you can sit on the bench, you know? Like, there's plenty of other people who when it took that fight, you know, and made weight. So it's just, if you don't want to be a professional, you can sit on the bench. You know, you've been a part of some of the bigger organizations like Invicta LFA, here you are at CES. Um, where, where are you headed to next? Because I saw you you had like the LFA takeover not too long ago. You're doing great with the promotion. People are getting to know who you are. I know it's unfortunate you didn't get to fight, but what can fans expect? What can fight fans expect from you? Uh, how, do you think you're going to be fighting in the next couple of months? W- what's going on here? Yeah, well, I wanted to get six MMA fights this year. So, I mean, this one, not being able to fight sucks. Uh, but hopefully I can get at least five or four in this year. So hopefully another one soon. But uh, just coming off from those, like, I fought and then uh, fought in April. In May, I did a jiu-jitsu pro. And then uh, I was supposed to fight yesterday. So I did three weight cuts in, like, a matter of, like, two months. So and just, like, constantly being in camp since March to, like, just now or whatever. So... Uh, I did get offered a, like a short notice fight for June thirtieth, but I had to turn it down just because I need to like listen to my body. Just being in camp, you know, that long and uh, doing the weight cuts. Uh, yeah, I just had to. I need to take some time to just rest and not be overtrained and get back to a hundred percent, and then uh, 
hopefully get a fight in like end of July or August, early August. Well, hopefully you're getting back in there as soon as possible because it looks like the fans were really upset. There are a lot of people even saying that yeah. this was the sleeper fight, the dark horse of the night, and there are a lot of fans yeah. looking forward to it. Yeah, I watched the I watched some of the fights and I'm like, yep, you know, like I would have had five of the night for sure. You know, it was going to be such a different for me. So before we let it's you go here, before we let you go, Mallory, what did you think of the fights? What was... Yeah, I thought they were really good. They were pretty good uh, matchups, and uh, the main event was really back and forth. I enjoyed watching it. It was sad that uh, that guy got choked out, but he's Sweet a good bread. guy. He'll come back. Yeah, you know, dealing with a loss like that in your hometown, it's a difficult thing. Uh, you yeah. know, he'll definitely bounce back. Uh, Chris O'Brien was just like, he'll get back on his horse. Was that your fight of the night? What did you think deserved fight of the night if you could pick one? Um, I didn't really watch all of them, but I would say, yeah, that one, the main event, would be one of the choices for fight of the night, for sure. Mallory, thank you so much for coming on Pure Evil on the May. We want to yeah, thank you. Yeah, for sure. You. Thank you. And last but not least, where can people find you on social media? Uh, it's Mallory Martin on Twitter and I think Instagram as well, and then Mallory Martin MMA on Facebook. Thank you so much, and hopefully we'll get to see you fight ASAP. For sure. Thank you. Have a great one. God bless. There you guys go, Mallory Martin, and up next. I mean, this has been a great show so far, guys. We are at the 40-minute mark here, Pure Evil MMA CES, 40, or CES 50 recap show. And before we call our next guest, let me just shoot a huge congratulations out to CES for a successful 50th event uh, last night at the Twin River Casino. Let's get Fabio on the show, who right now, guys, if you did not tune in last night, Fabio Charant, he has now moved to 2-0. He got the submission in the first round at 3 minutes, 55 second mark against Marcus Allen. And if you guys saw the interview that me and Fabio did together, you know, his opponent is originally a heavyweight. His opponent weighed in two pounds under the weigh-in system. Like, it just, it blew me away. And I actually had the chance to sit with uh, Prime Athletic Management, who sponsors Fabio. And it, it was just, I was at the edge of my seat the entire time. That first round, it was a little slow. There was a little bit, or a lot of grappling going on there. The crowd was feeling a little restless. But Fabio, getting it done. I want to figure out if that was his game plan or what was uh how is that's how he expected it to go because he's coming off like a 16 or excuse me he's gonna kill me a 13 <laughs> 13 second ko at his last event and like i said now he's moving on to two and oh at late heavyweight and lucked out because the last opponent who or last person we just talked to mallory martin with her fight getting taken off it boosted Fabio Charant's fight up to the main card. And it was aired free on the Facebook page for CES, on the CES fan page, and also on Access TV. So he got a lot, a, a huge platform to display that win on and get that first round finish. So let's try to get him on. Uh, while we're waiting for him to call me, though, you know, I was just talking about what fight of the night was. And, you know, immediately after the prelims, I was like, you know what, this is a pretty solid card so far. I got some of the take on the rest of the guys on Media Row, like Keith from the MMA Takeover and Nolan King, who is actually supposed to join me here tonight and do the recap show with me. Unfortunately, with Father's Day being tomorrow, he took his father out. So, uh, you know, Nolan, you enjoy that, man. You're always working hard. And I'm sure as he's eating tonight, he's going to be tweeting. He's eating and he's tweeting. with. <laughs> he's always he's always on Twitter, just like, uh, you know, some of the other guys in the, in the local scene that's uh, doing big things. This day and age. Uh, Nolan King. Make sure you guys are following him at MMA underscore Kings on Twitter. Big shout out to Nolan. But like I said, we were talking about the prelims after they wrapped up. Me and Nolan both agreed. And Keith. 7 out of 10. If we're rating it out of 10, 10 being the best. At the prelim point, and that was. Here's what we had so far at that prelim point. It was uh, Jorgen DeCastro with a TKO finish in round at number 3. At the 2 minute and 20 second Mark beating David White, who moves on to 0-3. Um, 
Oregon moving to 2-0, making one win by submission, one win by TKO. That was one of two late heavyweight fights. Now, Fabio was the only other late heavyweight fight on this card. He also got the finish. Uh, Hillary Rose, the only female fight on this card, she went up against Souza, Thais, uh, Souza from American Top Team down in Florida. She came in at 0-2, moves to 0-3 as she takes this loss. At strawweight, Hillary Rose moving to 1-1 now, training out of Norfolk, Mass. Um, that was two finishes. Third fight, Chris Montino going up against Alfred Jones. Now, this could have been knockout of the night. Third fight in, and I already circled it. He got the TKO at a 1 minute and 58 second point in the very first round. Chris Montano moving to 5-2 and two with two TKO finishes. Mass home bred from Milford, Massachusetts. The crowd was going crazy at Bantamweight. Gets it done inside one. That was three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back finishes to start off CES 50. Moving forward, we had Brendan Marote getting the win at 4 minutes and 47 seconds inside round number one at featherweight beating a very tough opponent Arslan Achev who trains right here in West Haven Connecticut 10 minutes down the road here now here's the thing about Arslan uh, you know tra training out Henzo Gracie's I believe I saw Nick Newell in his corner as well here's the thing he was a tough wrestler man that was a, a very tough fight pushing forward looking for takedowns um Back and forth inside one. It feels like that fight was actually longer than what it was. Um, but pro debut for Arslan, man. Looking forward to what happens next. He does take this loss, but it happens inside the sport. It happens. I trust that he's had a great team at West Haven uh, with Henzo and, and, and those guys there. Toby Odin getting the W as well. Trading out Triforce in Milford, Massachusetts. Moving on to 3-2 and two with one KO, one submission. Taking this fight by decision, 29-28, 30-27, 30-27. This fight was at welterweight up against Jeremy Puglia, who was making his pro debut as well, training out of Long Island, New York. He takes CL here in his pro debut. But Toby Odin moving to 3-2, bringing it home to Triforce back in Milford, Mass. Fabio Charant, who's going to be calling me any second, Hopefully, I think he's actually 10 minutes behind. You know, maybe he's trying to contact me on Skype. So let me try to call him on Skype. See what's going on with Fabio. See if he gave me a number here. Da, 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 da. Yeah, so he's probably going to call me. Oh, wait. I found a cell phone number. Let's give Fabio Charant a call. Boom. Here we go. Hopefully he'll pick up. Guys, make sure you're subscribed on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, Podomatic. You can find all those links on MyMMANews.com. What is going on, Fabio? Fresh off your win. We are live right now on Pure Evil MMA, brother. Congratulations on the W. Thank you very much. So, I want to get your take on this fight, man. I mean, first off, the way things worked out, perfect. Your opponent comes in underweight, two pounds underweight, and me and you were discussing, you know, if that was going to happen or not, and it does. And he exceeds the expectations. What did you think the moment he, your opponent came in two pounds under? I didn't care. I just, like I said, if he makes weight, he makes weight. If he doesn't, he doesn't. Either way, the fight was still on, and the fact he made way just shows he's a true professional, and he's serious about what he does. You know, hundred percent. Yeah, you you literally nailed the head. You literally nailed that one right there. There was issues on you know every card with fighters making weight for a guy who was at heavyweight to make it. Uh, down a weight class and come two pounds under. That's awesome. But let's talk about your victory, man. Getting the the finish inside the very first round. Getting the submission at three minutes and 55 seconds. What was that feeling like, man? I was sitting with um, Prime Athletic. We were going nuts. What was that? I said your your management was going nuts. He was so nervous. What was your reaction as soon as you sunk in that choke? Uh, 
as soon as I sunk it in, I knew it was over. I looked, I actually looked over at my coaches and made the face like it's over. As soon as I, as soon as I locked it in, I was just, I was, I was set. You know, I said, I, that's my move. Was there anything that surprised you right off the bat? It seemed like you guys were going in there, feeling each other out uh, at first, and then there was a little bit of grappling. Was that trying to, you know, tire him out a little bit because he was taking? No, no, that. So my game plan was to move around and, 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 and throw, but uh, the, the floor was so slippery. I could not, I could not make any any moves without slipping. You know, so I was just so my my game plan went from striking to just let him come to me, tie him up, and and uh, go for the submission. You know, yeah, you guys are are, are big at that weight class at light heavyweight. And on top of it, there are a lot of guys that were slipping all over the canvas. We were discussing it on a, a press row. You know, th those canvases can be very slippery, especially if you make one small slip. If you're an inch yeah. off, it could throw the entire fight off. I actually, yeah, I actually stubbed my toe a little bit when I uh, shot it. I, I went in for an overhand, and um, when I when I made my my initial initial movement. I just I just jammed my toe and that's when I was kind of like, all right, I'm not gonna bother doing this anymore. I'm just gonna let this guy come to me. So Fabio, this makes two finishes for you as a professional. You had one win by submission going into this fight, and then you pick up another one going out. Yes, sir. So you know we were talking about it when you came on the show a week a week out. You know you said if it comes to me, then I'll grab it. And it came, man. So what is the reactions that you're seeing? From your teammates, what did your coaches have to say about your finish? My coaches obviously were pumped about it. They knew the same thing. Um, they were actually telling me that, you know, that submission, the, the submission, it, it's full proof. But the way I set it up and the way I, uh, things I did, you know, we need a fix. So it doesn't get stopped. What did you guys then, talk about? I mean... Uh, going into what this, that? what did you guys talk about going into going into this fight with you know? The, did you think that this was gonna go to a submission? Uh, uh we have everybody jokes around and calls me the guard for the, <laughs> at the gym, you know. So everybody was predicting that I was gonna submit him. You know, it's just <laughs> when it was gonna come. Um, but yeah, it's, it's funny. So. Um, but yeah, so before the fight, me and my coaches, we just went over. We're, the game plan was to strike, like I said, and just stay calm, move around, use my movement. My movement was going to be better than his. Um, if, if I just stay calm, just move around, you know, and then, and then, if it if it comes time to it, if it comes time to it, just submit them. Now, was there any added pressure knowing that this was going to be on? First off, the main card because Mallory's fight fell off, and we just had Mallory on who who cleared that up. But the way that things worked out, you got boosted up to the main card. Did that add a little more pressure, knowing that there were going to be a lot of people uh, watching? You got Pat Militic commentating. That was awesome. I was I I, I thought that was the coolest thing ever. You know, it was a blessing in disguise that, it, that how how things happen. But I got to debut on live television, like you said, and I couldn't be more honored for that. It didn't change my my uh, mindset at all, though. You know, it's, I debuted when my pro debut. I was the first fight of the night. I, I think I had more. I was more nervous for that fight than than uh, yesterday's. So, like I said, I was talking with your 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 management with Prime Athletic Management. And they were talking about, you know, what's going on with you now that you're 2-0. and um, You know, we talked about some of the beef that you've had in the past with one of your opponents. What, what do you think you're, you're going to do next? Do you think that? Um, right now I have some injuries I got I to gotta get over. But like I said to you before, I'm 23 years old. I'm in no, no rush to get anywhere. If a fight lands on my lap, I'll take it. But right now... I'm just taking care of what I need to take care of. You know, I knew that I was going to fight either way. I was going to show up and do my thing. I, I trained through all the injuries I had. 
I didn't really complain about it too much. And I said, once my fight's over, that's when I'll take care of my injuries. So what I need to do now. Fabio, before we let you go, how did you celebrate your win afterwards? Did you go out to the after party? Did you chow down on uh, a giant donut? What did you do? We, uh, me and a few friends just came back to the house and just had, had, had some drinks and just hung out, you know. Yeah, actually, I was I was watching that on your Instagram story. Now that you now that you bring it up, after all the training, after all the uh, the food that you've got to miss out on, now you get to relax for a couple of days. So I hope that you can enjoy yeah. that, man. I had a blast watching your fight. Before we let you go, do you have any shout outs? Any anything at all that you would like to get out there to the people? I just uh, shout out to my gyms. You know, Tri Force on the City of Tonga, uh, down in Boston. Um, Crew Mike Delagrati, Crew Local Logo, Andy Cody, Diamond Dave, um, all those guys, you know, helped me a lot getting mentally ready for the fight, physically meant, physically ready. So, I mean, I couldn't be doing what I am doing now without them. Last but not least, what did you think about that main event? You know, Mark Delagrati, your coach, your teammate, what did you think about that main event? Um, I thought it was a good fight. It was, it was a good fight. Uh, um, Leading to the leading to the finish, um, both guys both guys showed their stuff obviously, um, and and it just shows you it's the fight game. Shit happens. I know it's my teammate. I obviously wanted him to win, and I think everybody there wanted him to win. I hope you know, but the fight game is crazy. Anything can happen. Yeah, the way that things work out in the fight game, you know, you like we the. We've been saying Chris O'Brien was just on. He was like, I'm sure he'll get back on his horse and keep riding through yes. because CES is really trying to build him into a big star. He beat Bam Bam's brother. He's at a great gym. He's got the support in the crowd. But the way that fight was, I think that was fight of the night um, all around. It definitely lived up to expectations, even though Sweetbread did lose. Um, you know, we wish him well. So thank you so much for coming on today's show, Fabio, and I want to congratulate you on your win once again, and we'll talk to you very soon. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Pure Evil MMA CES 50 recap show, and it wouldn't be complete if we didn't speak to the two guys in the main event and fresh off of his win this weekend at CES 50, we got Andre the Afro Monkey Yule joining us. What's going hey, on? Hey, hey, hey. Not much. How you guys doing? How y'all doing? Doing good, man. You guys definitely put on an amazing performance this week and everything that we were hoping for. Obviously, you were coming in there. It was kind of tough because, you know, you're coming all the way from, you know, the West Coast to fight a guy who is, you know, building his name on the East Coast, trying to make a name for himself within an East Coast promotion. So first, before we talk about the fight, how did this fight present itself to you? Did, um, you know, Pat Sullivan reach out to you? How did this fight come into play? Uh, it got all placed with KO reps, my managing group, um, Orn, Matt, they all brought it to my table and I jumped on just factors in that there's a chance for me to build a fan base on the other side besides just California. Cause you know, you got to have a bigger goal in life than just trying to be something made in California or somewhere in one hometown that only goes so far and I had the mindset of taking over the world and wanted the world to know about me just the fact was in how my mentality is you know so when that, that came to, to the table I jumped I, I'm not gonna lie to that I jumped and I knew that was a good chance especially with the with that name Dennis um, uh, Piva you know so with that I, I had to jump on it and you know what you're no stranger to you know the MMA community we're all familiar with you from LFA, King of the Cage, and whatnot. So this was actually uh, one of the first times you fought for CES. It was a big opportunity. Like you said, you grab it. You got to do that when it happens. And the way the fight went down, man, I think a lot of people were surprised how good you were in there. You know, the people who didn't know who you were, you were long, you had range. Uh, how did you see that first round going? Uh, truly, I felt that I was winning it until he stole it by taking me down. And and it, that kind of followed up on the second round as well. It's just that, like on paper, I knew that I had to stand up. It was just, you know, getting a little closer, being patient of trying to make it like land. And with the whole fans and everything that was behind them, kind of put a little bit more edgy 
around it where I was trying to be very explosive and it kind of like partially backfired, especially when it, uh, you know, he, the man, um, Dennis, he has a, a wonderful IQ on the stand up. So when that happened, where I was barely missing and then I was getting a little bit closer and I'm just feeling it like I'm just there for like a piece of second and then I start touching him and then he went over there and switched into that takedown and that's where he got points from me right there. So yeah, first round I felt like I was winning until he, you know, he got me down and then that's where I knew it was, like I said, if it went to the cards, I knew they would have gave him that round period. So in my eyes, I was behind. So going into the second round, and if you guys been listening to the beginning of the show, I was saying this is probably the best round of the entire event. Like you guys really put on in the second round that way that the energy was. It was back and forth. Uh, you know, bring us through the second round. What was going on? Uh, second round, I already knew I had to end up sticking off with the range. Just that you know he just got a fresh takedown from at the end of the round, so I knew it was kind of he was gonna end up building up the same pace that he did the first one. So another thing, points to Dennis right there for standing with me because people do not like standing with me. Period, and he gets mad credit for me for that. And for him to take the shots that I was throwing at him, most people wouldn't even walk through. And here's another thing, I end up taking uh, tasting some of his blows up in the first and the second round and I and I understood how he was dropping everybody. Like, you know, Dennis he hits hard. And if me personally, you know what I'm saying, if you would have fought anybody else, he would have been walking away with the belt. And that's a hundred percent. If he was it was if I was anybody else in that cage, he'd be walking away with that belt, as I say. So, you know, as I speak. So in the end going into that third round, the crowd was literally like everyone was at the edge of their seats. The crowd was going crazy cheering for, uh, they were cheering sweet bread, and then he comes out. What do you think was going on on his end? Do you think that, you know, he, he, he got, yeah. w w what do you think was going on uh, at the beginning of that yeah. third round that caused uh, what happened to happen? Uh, it was takedown, because it's one of those, when you build like that little, that fighting boxing IQ, he, I know he felt that that stand-up is more swaying on my end, and this is where he had to end up uh, doing it, uh, going for a takedown. Because you know, you had that. If you end up looking at the end of that, uh, that second round, he's, he's getting success, and you know, he had like great success at the end, like you know, dropping elbows, you know, controlling, um, me maneuvering, but barely like escaping a, a few punches, taking a, um, a nice elbow. Uh, a few times he would have had like split, and I honestly thought like, he almost did split me, you know. Uh, but when it came down to that third round, it's one of those, let me take you down, catch your breath. That's the third round of, you know, a breather. He knows I was tired, he's tired, and that, you know, in this corner, it's like, hey, you're bleeding. It was like a lot of blood. Man, it was like very slippery. It was just like slippery all in the, the end of the second round into the third. So as soon as uh, that happened, my, my mentality was, you know, I'm, I'm going. I'm going to go straight for the stroke here. Just that, like, you know, he was edging off in the other, um, the, the second round where I ended up going for like two submission attempts and he slipped through because of the blood and, you know, slippery and his will. And, you know, his will ended up pulling him through everything. Uh, when I went from the triangle to the arm bar. And, but that next round, I wasn't letting go of that. You yeah. Know? You were, you were getting through on some of the shots that was busting up. I believe it, what it was, his left, his right eye. Uh, right eye. His right eye was getting pretty busted up and, uh, you know, started bleeding pretty bad. Going into that third round, you know, I was talking to the guys on Media Row and they were going, you know, this is a five-round fight. These guys have been putting out a lot of energy here. And then all of a sudden, you, you, you snapped it in. Did you feel that that was it as soon as you, as soon as you locked in? As uh, soon as I locked in, yeah, I knew I wasn't letting that go. And he told me. And then this is one thing, like I said, Dennis gets – so much respect for me. People do not understand how much respect this man gets from me. He told me, uh, whispered to me before we, uh, you know, after we got done weighing in, we shook hands. He let me know. He said, you're going to have to kill me to take that belt. And, you know, and like a, a personal thing, it's like I knew that. And it was like I had to hold it on, had to squeeze and not let go. It was just one of those things I couldn't um, do. You know, because I knew it was one of those take his life or not. And he said he was like one tap away from dying. So, and that's what something I ended up believing. You know, because he, he, he was, that man was not going to, because I had that trap 
And if you end up looking at the tape, that 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 um that submission was locked in for like a good fifteen seconds. And I'll squeeze it for fifteen seconds. You know? So I for him to be lasted that long, yeah, that man gets so much credit for me. So as soon as the ref steps in, splits you guys up, what was going through your mind? I mean, the, it felt like the energy in the room just got sucked out because you know everyone there is is obviously there to support the hometown the hometown guy. Hero. You know, yeah, that's the hero. One thing I thought that was definitely very respectful is that you know the people that were displeased, uh, Dennis got up on his stool and was like, "No, guys, let's show let's show Andre some respect here." Uh, you know, wh- how did you feel getting that win, man? Uh, the, the win meant everything. Because, you know, it's like uh, going back, uh, me telling from the gate that every fight that I end up doing is for my son. And people that honestly understand that hard work and dedication of what's being placed in will automatically get that respect and automatically want to show that respect. And that's where Dennis is coming from. Like, he knows that hardship of where he had to do to get there. And he knows that I'm doing the same thing. Like, people don't understand, even though I'm on this side, the West, and he's on the East, me and him have a similar story. It's one of those people were down on us, things didn't go the right way. Life just struck us in a, in a, in a different predicament that wasn't good. And we had to end up working a way to get to the top. And, like, you know, it wasn't handed to us. So what do we do? We had to automatically work. And for me to come to his hometown and me recognize something that's on the outside looking in from, you know, from me, like, oh, that's like myself. It was like a mirror image. And it's not just fighting style. It was like a mirror image of me looking at that and how the people were behind, you know? Like, you got to honestly think about that. Like, that's your guys' or you know, their hometown hero that ended up losing. But at the same time, ended up winning. Like, you know, it's like on the opposite. Like, yeah, though you lost, he won. And he won respect. Uh, excuse me? And, and it's big on your part, too. I mean, once you get to the big stage in the UFC, you're going to have to, or, or Bellator, you're going to have to fight guys, you know, overseas or in their hometowns. And, and how do you react to that? And you got to fight in places like this and experience yep. how that feels. You know, get yourself uncomfortable. And and you did exactly that. So now you're moving on to 13 and 4. You got seven knockouts, four submissions now. Uh, what does CES want you to do next year? What, what, what does the game plan look like moving forward towards the end of this year? Well, the end of this year right now, I'm not going to lie. Obviously, the goal is to make it to the UFC. Just that August 4th, it's it's in my hometown, or, you know, my backyard, L.A., Staples Center, you know, one of the biggest sponsor weight um, cards that's going to be out this year. And me, everybody up on there that's on that list, I would destroy. And I just how to say how I feel. I am the best. And if like anybody honestly want to feel like they have the challenge that they can go ahead and, um, you know, call my, uh, my managing group or shoot, give me a message and I'll send it to my managing group, you know? And if that doesn't go that direction, you know, when to see what, uh, what the, my managing group wants to do with everything. So right now they sit there and state that we're going to kind of sit and see what's going to open up the door, you know, cause me, I'm open to every challenge, anybody that's open, anybody can get it, hashtag AB, you know, right there. Like, that's the mentality I have and always have. I don't mind going in other people's backyards just to prove my point, because my whole goal is to let people know that I'm the best. So if I have to go to your house, I'll go to your house, you know, and that's the attitude I'm going to have. So UFC, Bellator, you know, or even take over the next LFA, whatever, whatever, uh, Whoever ends up striking up on, on the board, ACB, that's a good uh, organization that I would love to go. One championship, I would like to destroy that. So anybody that has the best, let, let's go. That's how I feel. And you know what? One thing before we let you go, one thing that definitely stands out about you is the energy that you have. Like, I've been checking out your social media game. It's definitely really strong, man. And you're always dancing. You're in a good mood. I love the energy. I love what you're bringing to the table. CES has a great new bantamweight champion on their hands. And we're looking forward to what happens next with you. Uh, last but not least, man, do you got, like, dancing background? What, what, what's up with all this dancing and, and, and this good vibes? Where's that really come from? <laughs> Uh, just growing up, I, mean, I always jammed to Michael Jackson. Like Michael Jackson was always played in my household. My mom jammed it. They gave me some red boots, a cowboy hat, and Jackson 5 was on. Your boy was just out there. So everything that comes down, it's just I enjoy dancing. 
Enjoy it. It's the way I look at it. If you don't enjoy doing what you do, you're in the wrong thing. Or you're in the wrong sport. You're in the wrong job. And I enjoy fighting. I'm good. I'm great at it. So that ends up bringing us to the moment where I like to dance. So it makes me feel like I'm, I'm at home, you know? Well, so you, dancing is a life. You said you went into this fight feeling like Deion Sanders on draft day, and now you get to you celebrate like Michael Jordan after the big win. Thank you so much there for joining is. us here on Pure Evil MMA. Last but not least, if you have any sponsors, anything, any, any shout-outs, anything at all, the floor is all yours. Oh, definitely. For the for my sponsors, man, I want to go ahead and state out. Um, shout-out to KL Reps for um, managing me. Sponsors for, like, Lynn's Truck. Um, one sh- Stop Storage, uh, Sober Recovery, um, Brandon's Diner, United um, Untamed Youth, Riverside Royalty, again, 100% Violence, Bad Boys for honestly coming in, you know, showing me love. We have, sheesh, like I feel like if I end up missing anybody, like IDM, appreciate the love there. Um, Jeez, I feel like I got everybody at the moment. Oh, health, health and body nutrition. Them for automatically pushing me through this without them, like, hey, uh, that, that, hey, the supplements of life. I end up giving you guys that. That, that becomes credit. Uh, points to my own team, Apex and Impact MMA, uh, the new gym facility that's opened. Um, and anybody else that I end up forgetting, it's my apologies. I end up showing you love with a nice hug and a smile. Hey, last last but not least, did you reach out to, to, to Sweet Bread after the fight? And uh, where did you guys leave off? Uh, we left off on a good um, page. I owe him a drink. Um, we ended up stating that. Uh, he knows this. I told him uh, anytime that I'm out there or he's out here, we got to hang. And he's um, perfectly open to come to my gym. And if I'm out there, hopefully I have the same love, which I believe so. So right now, I told him that uh, he got my respect from the gate and at the end of it, and he just earned a, um, uh, a friend. Well, so. you came from the West Coast as the away guy, and now you are the home champion for CES, so you better represent the East Coast now that you're an East Coast champion. Thank you so much, Andre, yeah. for, okay. for everything, man, and have a great day. We're looking forward to what the future brings. I appreciate that. Thank you. Let me say, like, I've been to a bunch of local events, you know, I don't even want to name promotions with what I'm about to say, but, you know, they did a great job with handing out, you know, flyers, banners. They had, uh, like I said, KFC and Taco Bell inside, which really sucks if you're the fighter, you know, you're irritable, you're caught in weight. You don't want to smell that food. Grade D beef. Get out of here with that. That's got to be rough. But for the fans, they were loving it. They also had a silent auction as well where they were giving away merchandise. One merch that I really want. I wish I could have put a bid in on. There was the picture from Goodfellas of the dog, the two dogs and the guy. If you guys know what I'm talking about. When they go to whatchamacallit's mom's house to chop up the body, there's the picture on the on the wall. They're all sitting there having coffee while the guy's dead bodies in the trunk. It's like, yeah, I like this picture. One dog's looking this way, one dog's looking that way, and this guy's sitting here like, what the fuck you want from me? I wanted that picture so bad. And, uh, you know, they had that. They had a bunch of autographed uh, Mickey Mantle, Kobe Bryant. Maybe not those two exact, but they had, you know, big athletes, signatures, sports memorabilia, a good 30, 40 items. So, and I believe that they were donating most of the cash to charities. So, you know, seeing CES do this, uh, putting together their 50th event. I mean, tickets were starting at $40. Very reasonable. $40. 2020, guys. That's reasonable for, for MMA. Up close and personal. Local. Watching these guys bloom. There is nothing more exciting than when you see a guy that you've watched fight on the regional scene. Maybe it's from your city. Maybe he's, maybe he's just local. Maybe you know one of his teammates. Whatever. If you see a guy fight... And then two years later, you see him on the big show in the UFC. This happens all the time. I'm seeing this happen a lot. Matt Bissett, Nick Newell, two guys. Justin Sumner, he's been on the show before. He's going to be on week seven of Dana Way's Tuesday Night Contender Series. There is nothing more exciting than seeing these athletes blossom before our eyes. 
I cannot recommend this anymore to, to people here on the East Coast. If you're on the West Coast, there are plenty of venues out there that are going on locally. I mean, there's not just the UFC. When people think of MMA, they think of just the UFC. You know, I go to Thanksgiving and I talk to my family about what I do. They go, oh, he, he does his WWF. He covers his UFC. No, it, no, ah, it makes me so mad. But you know what? They're getting it. They're getting it. As years go on with people like Ronda Rousey, Conor McGregor, they're learning. My mom's at pay-per-view parties by herself. My little sister predicted Mayweather McGregor better than I did. It just it cracks me up. This is huge. You know, I, I bring this up all the time. If you've been listening to Pure Evil MMA for a while now, you've heard me say this before. 2018, let's go back 20 years to 1998. You did not see family showing up to MMA events like you do now. Back then, if you're going to represent your local athletes, you're going to see the New Haven Ravens, you're going to see the New Haven Beast, you're going to see the Hartford Whalers. Maybe not the Hartford Whalers at the NHL, but you, you get my point here. This day and age, you're seeing families come out to watch MMA fights. There is no better sport out there. There is no better live sport where you're going to feel that personal, that close, that edge of your seat feeling. And once you get a connection, once you see a fighter or find fighters that you like, and you build a connection, there's nothing like it. I mean, yeah, there's baseball. Like, when I was growing up, even, like, if you guys could see around me here in the studio, even just behind me, right above me here, we got Roger Maris, Mickey Mantle, 1961, big year. But it took a lot to get to that point. The, right now, I feel like that era right there that was in baseball when my... My grandparents were telling me the stories about Mickey Mantle, Roger Maris, and Babe Ruth, and all these stories that used to get me excited and, and made me really fall in love with baseball to start with. This ain't, I'm going to be telling my grandchildren about Conor McGregor, about Nick Newell, who grew up down the road, about Matt Bissett. You know what I'm like? It's just MMA is where it's at, 2018. Jump on board if you're not on board yet. I recommend it, guys. CES, having their 50th event. Tickets for so cheap. Upcoming events here. We got Bellator comes around a lot here to the local area in Connecticut. A Lion Fight is going to be coming back in a couple of weeks as well. We're going to get full coverage for you for that. But, guys, other than the main event, my other fight for pick of the night, going to John Duma versus Adam Aquaviva. Aquaviva, man, coming all the way out. From Syndicate MMA out in Las Vegas. That's a long, that's a that's quite the flight, man. And he was a big underdog going in there against Providence, Rhode Island, Triforce own John Duma. Adam Aquaviva getting the TKO round number three at the two minute and forty seven mark, making him get two knockouts, two submissions, turning him six and three now as a professional MMA bantamweight. And I'm looking forward to what's next for a lot of these guys here on this card. You got Pac uh, McCrowan. McCrowan going against Reg, uh, Reg Felix, man. Reg Felix getting the TKO round number two at the 4 minute and 42 second mark. That was another very exciting fight. They put on a CES 50. If I have to rate it out of 10, first, let me tell you, I asked Nolan the same question. This is what we do at the end of our 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 recap shows, whether it's CES, Lion Fight, Bellator, UFC, we're going to rate it out of 10. 10 being the best, 1 being the worst. Now, I asked Nolan, who was supposed to be on the show, Nolan King, what he rated this. And if you heard where we were at, up at the prelims, momentum was building up until that point. We had all these finishes. There were only two decisions on the entire night. Finish after finish. Prelims, we gave 7 out of 10. And it only got better from that moment on. I think CES, if you're looking at CES in a whole, you know, as a fan going out to watch a live event, let me rate it as a live event and as a TV event because there's there's two different emotions that go in there. If you're at the live event and you're seeing you know, these people walk around, these guys that you've been seeing on TV, Pat Militich, uh, you're seeing the guys on Media Row that you're tweeting with. 
Uh, and shout out to, to people that were coming up taking pictures with us as well on Media Row. I love seeing the love uh, for what for what we do here on Media. It means a lot. It adds a different vibe. It adds a little more, honestly. The emotion, added emotion there, seeing the family. I think last night event, card of the year. Nine out of 10 so far, best card I've covered all year. CS50 getting that end of the year in review. We will be bringing this back up. And I'm not just saying that, like I've been able to digest it. Usually I do recap shows right after, and I did on the Instagram page. But now that I've had about 24 hours to kind of digest what happened, look back, talk to some of these fighters. Good nine out of 10 on the fight night card as a whole. Now is it TV? Yeah, and I did not watch it on TV. But if we're looking at it on paper, looking at the results, it's very close to nine out of 10. I think fans would agree with maybe a seven or an eight out of 10. With the regional card, it did great. It fired on all cylinders. It did, it couldn't have done any better. As a regional card, it couldn't have done any better. You couldn't have asked, only thing I would have made this, this fight card better if there was something ridiculous that happened that stood out that you'd be like, oh my, what the? You know, <laughs> you can't ask for that stuff to happen. You can't make that stuff happen, it just does. But with what we had, what we were given, it couldn't have gone any better. I'd get that. 10 out of 10, but for TV, the fights on paper, 7 out of 10 on the night, trying to give, you know, as clear of an answer as I can there without being biased at all, if you're, and I'm trying to think, if you're new to the sport and that was your first event to watch, man, you had everything you, you wanted there, you had the moments where you're at the edge of your seat, where the underdog won, where the guy who was winning at the, the beginning of the fight ends up losing. You had the, the, the drama unfold, uh, the fights that didn't even happen with, <laughs> with missing weight, that added some more drama. And this was a great card. I think they did an amazing job for CES, the guys in charge. Big shout out to uh, Pat Sullivan, who puts all of these matches together. Man, I am looking forward to CES 51. I want to thank all of our guests that joined us today. Jose Lugo, who got the rear naked choke in the second round. Mallory Martin uh, from LFA Invicta CES. Unfortunately, unable to get the fight. Fabio Charant moving to 2-0, no, guys. What a night. Chris O'Brien stopping by. Cage Titans champ. Training alongside the one and only Joe <laughs> Giannetti of Top 27. Oh, man. What a year it's been. I'm loving it. I'm loving every second. It was my birthday a couple days ago. It's been a great week, guys. Thank you so much for all the birthday wishes. Everyone that's been supporting Pure Evil. I'm going to make sure you guys subscribe down below. I try to keep you guys up to date with the recap last night on MyMMANews.com. So make sure you check them out because they get all the latest Pure Evil MMA content. All the links for the podcast, whether it's on Stitcher, Podbean, Podomatic. I'm trying to get it on Spotify, but they got their own issues with their policy update or whatnot. Big shout out to Sweet Red. I know he didn't get the finish. My heart goes out to him. But man, get back on the horse. Get back to it, guys. I'm Evil Eddie from Pure Evil MMA. My MMA news.com. Wait, I'll go till the end. <laughs>